Welcome back to Shenzhen Zen Jamaican Vibes. It's been a while since we've visited Petra. I think the last time we came to visit Miss Petra Wilson was when her mother, grandmother rather, when her grandmother had passed away. And um, she has been through a lot since, lots of ups and downs. But I want to say thank you to those persons who donated to her since that video since the first first video and and those who continue to help i know since i've recently she hasn't been getting a lot of help but um just a reminder that it is very hectic and it does cost a lot and she don't they really don't have it and it costs a lot to go to kingston the back and forth to kingston from westmoreland and um and so please continue to support her your mom is not here, Petra. What happened to mommy? Um, about a week ago, she was complaining about shortness of breath, and I told her that she would she, that she should go to the hospital. So when she went over there, they um, did some tests and had her on a ventilator over there. Mm -hmm. So they admitted her for the asthma and she, and a ventilator and nebulizer. When you when you go to hospital, it's a nebulizer, man, the for the asthma to help you to breathe. Yes, yeah. that is. Yeah. yeah. They had her on the nebulizer mm -hmm. over there, and while she's in the hospital, they told her that she might have a chest infection, so oh. they were giving her antibiotics and stuff. And she also had a feed problem as well, but that wasn't the main reason why she went over mm -hmm. there. While in the hospital, they are looking about the her feet. foot as well. Yes. Oh, okay. She every day her feet is swollen, so it seems like it's poor blood circulation. Oh. So they are giving her um some injection in the hospital for the foot as well. It has gone down. Right. But they need to know what is the main cause of it. So they are keeping her longer. Yes. Oh. So, but she still has. A so how long she been in the hospital? Monday gone would be a week, so Monday, two, two, three, one week and two days. Oh, oh my. Okay, when I spoke to you this morning and you told me about the asthma, I decided to give you this machine, a nebulizer machine, because my daughter got a new one because she is also asthmatic. So all um, they would have to do at the hospital is prescribe the, the nibs for her to put in the machine. So. If she ever have a attack at home, thank you very much. Yeah, she can administrate she it herself. It. Yeah. All right. So, um, how have you been? You said how is the hospital visit? What's been going on with that? What's the last thing they said when you went back to KPH? To be honest, Miss, it just seems like it's just going and come on, but we just have to just work it with the muscle. Basically. They're going to tell me it's my fault because I went up there three times the last time to do the MRI. Yeah. And the three times I go under the machine, it was a problem because they say I'm claustrophobic. But right. The first time I went and they found out that um, I had to come back down and they say when the last time when I went up there, <laughs> um, they admitted me for about a week trying to get a place for me to do the MRI mm -hmm. and while I was there they said they were going to put me on some sleeping meds for mm -hmm. me to calm down and not know what's going on while I'm under the machine but the day when I'm supposed to go they didn't give me any sleeping meds so oh. when I went under the machine, it was the same thing. I started to panic and sweat and all kind of things. So the doctor took me from under there and said, they can't do anything about it. They have to put sedate me while I'm under the machine. So when I went back up there the 3rd of February mm -hmm. for an appointment, the doctor told me that they would have to get a place that can monitor me while I'm under the machine and the sleeping meds oh. because I have a heart problem so they have to monitor me while I'm on the machine and they say they would have to get the appointment date and get the ambulance and 
get the doctor or a nurse to follow me go up there that day and they would call me when everything in, is in order for me to come up there right. but I haven't got a call from them as yet that's on the February the 3rd oh and I tried calling them back the same week um, and I didn't get any answer I was trying to call them calling the hospital yeah and when I called the hospital, I couldn't reach the doctor specifically. So they say would, they would leave a message, but a little bit after that, my mom went to the hospital. So oh. I didn't try to call them back after that because eventually if I call them and they tell, tell me to come up there, I don't have anyone to follow me up there. Right. So I'm just waiting on my mom to come back from the hospital so I can give them a call if they don't call me by that time and ask them what is happening or else I'm gonna have to go up there and try to talk to the doctor so the MRI is really to check your kidney yes and, and that is what you've been trying to do for the past what, four months it hasn't reached four months about three months yes oh my um, and, and each time I go up there for, to do the MRI, I have a problem on the machine. So it's been like three visits you have since, or four? Three visits. Three visits. To oh. do the MRI. Yes. Yeah, I remember. Because yes. when you went, you came back and you said you had to do the MRI. All right. Wow, that's a lot. Lord of mercy. I just want you to be able to remove the tumor from your kidney yes so for those who's watching the video for the first time this is petra wilson in westmoreland dunbar's river in westmoreland and she see she's living with several major health conditions she has a brain aneurysm a tumor on her kidney she has a heart condition which is she have heart failure and she has diabetes and high blood pressure um, that's a lot to be living with, but she's saying that because she is claustrophobic when she goes under the machine to do the MRI because they, they require an MRI in order to see what's going on with the tumor and the kidney so they can know how to operate, but it's taking too long. I believe that more could be done to speed up the process, especially the day you're saying the day that you should have gone, that you should have gotten the sleeping pills and you didn't get it. You know, that's something that they could have paid more attention to, to ensure that you got the MRI done. Um, so I'm asking for people out there who has been supporting to continue to support her because going back and forth from Westmoreland to Kingston is very expensive and they really don't have it. And her, her main support since she um, found out she, she was ill was her dad and her dad passed away. Her mom is not working and currently she's in the hospital. And furthermore, Miss Petra was working and because of illness, she had to stop work. She was working at the hotel in Rio, Rio Hotel. I work at Rio and then I left Rio and went to Grand Palladium and then from Grand Palladium to Sanders. But I didn't spend much time at Sanders, about a month at Sanders and then you got sick and then she said she was saving up her money you know because she wanted to do an addition she started it but she didn't know that this sickness would have taken her so most of what she had saved she would have spent it out long ago so she's asking for your continued support with her traveling back and forth to the kph hospital and again i want to say thank you to those who have sent donations they, she have sent me so many receipts so I want to say thank you to, to everyone who contributed to her alright continue to support her Petra have two bag here um, one is from Canada this one here is from Canada this is from Miss Janice some sanitary items are in there because you're, you're diabetic I didn't want to give you anything that is not good for you so this is this has no salt no salt added and um, lintels and um, some sanitary items and shampoo and condition. This bag here is from my friends from the UK, Dean, Cindy British and Winston. 
all right they are on Dilston High Street in the UK and this this is from my friend Janice from Canada she gave me a lot to give out yes, so it, yes so you can read while you're at home and you know sometimes when you're down you can read your daily bread <laughs> so um yes thank you so much Dean Winston and Cindy British for donating the two barrels thank you Janice for donating the barrel that you donated as well to Miss Janice and for the groceries and thank you everyone that supported send their prayers and for your well wishes thank you very much it's really appreciated and thank you to Cindy British and Winston from the UK I really appreciate it yes 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 thanks guys all right so um I hope these these food items help. Uh, when you called me the other day and you said any little thing you, you have like grocery can give me because it's really rough right now. And um, even though I didn't feel so strong, I said, you know, I'm going to strong up and come give you a visit and bring you some of these groceries. So, you know, God has provided it to the program and I'm glad that I am able to come and issue it out to you who is a person who is in need. So I'm happy that I make it today and um, you were saying that you wanted to do something for yourself the other day come talk to us about that um, I was thinking about starting something for myself that I could make a little profit it's something that I can do from my house and I thought of something that I could do I could sell uni pearls and uni wash and work acid those are some female hygiene products that I see a lot of people selling. So I think that would be a good idea. But um, I just need a start so that I can go ahead and do something for myself. Mm. Or any other little thing that I can do from my house would really be appreciated. Yeah, so you're really, you're, you're one of the persons who are, could be considered for the program, teach the people how to fish because you you really want to do something for yourself yes, yes. all right so uh, even something to occupy my time as well yeah yeah it, it can be get depressing when you're by yourself at yes. home and you have nothing to do yes. i understand all right we'll continue to pray for you petra and may god continue to bless you and keep you strong and keep you going until you get this tumor removed from your kidney and uh, I pray that your mom too will be released from the hospital soon and I hope the nebulizer machine will help her. Um, thank you guys for supporting Shenzhen and Jamaican Vibes. Please continue to support Petra Wilson. Um, to donate to Petra Wilson, you'd have to donate directly to her, which means you can contact me and I will give you her contact information. Um, she doesn't really want to put out her WhatsApp number out there. Unless it's, you know, somebody that is serious about helping her and contacting her. So, once you contact me, I will forward you, I will forward her number to you so you can donate to her directly. Because she doesn't live close to me. She's living in Westmoreland and I'm in St. Elizabeth. Alright? And also, I'm going to take this opportunity to, to try to find a friend of mine. Her name is... Trisha Thompson and she and I attended Jamaica Bible College in 2006 from 2006 to 2008 I lost contact with her in 2011 and I haven't been able to um, get in touch with her since I know she once lived in Colleyville Manchester and um, she attended Homewood Technical and she was living in Colville, Manchester at the time. But we lost contact and I would love to get in touch with her. So if anybody knows Trisha Thompson, you can reach out to me so I can um, get back in touch with her. She was a very good friend to me. All right. And um, as you all know, I wasn't well. I haven't been well for quite some time now. And, you know, I was really going through... Uh, depressive moment very anxious and depressive moment so I had anxiety and depression and some high blood pressure I managed to control the high blood pressure though 
but you know um i i found out that i was in anemic as well so my iron levels were extremely low i've been trying to build it up um i'm not as strong as i was before but i am getting back to that stage i can feel it in my body so i'm, I'm moderately starting to go back out there and and do the charity a lot of people have been calling me to say to see how i'm doing and to check up you know so thank you to those person i appreciate i appreciate you guys reaching out to me and there's a lady that reached out to me guys if you have reached out to me and i'm not able to to get to you i'm not able to help you because i'm not able to help everyone because i'm not god and there's a lot of other people out there who are doing similar to what i'm doing so if you can reach out to them and try to get some help whichever way their their government ministries to that you can try to reach out to but if i can't help you you don't have to call me and curse me there's a lady that called me and i have never experienced it before it's the first the lady called me for help she's been calling me for a while but it's been since i got sick and i said i told her i'm here in kingston i'm in saint elizabeth i can't reach you because you're you're a bit far from me and I, I wouldn't want to take on a situation like that especially how arrogant and ignorant she came to me so i said um if i get to the social work i'll let you know i've been calling that lady the social worker and i'm not i haven't gotten through to her and um mr everett armstrong who was living in the hospital he's now out he's the one who gave me the social worker number so he knows that i'm not lying about what i'm saying i tried to get help for the lady even after she disrespected me and uh, that was what happened so i'm just saying it to say i can't help everybody and i have to be honest sometimes it's hard to say no but when some people call me i'm just going to say no because it's unfair for me to say yes to everybody and then not be able to help them either and it's also unfair to me because i have a child i have a husband i have a family and if I say yes to everybody, then how am I going to find time for them? Right? So, I just want to say this now publicly. If you call me and you ask for help and you don't get it and you're going to call me back and be rude, you're not going to get any help from me. So, that's it, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching and thanks for making it Shanzen Zen Jamaican Vibes. Until next time, walk good and look out for your neighbor.